Hey everyone, sorry for the delay there between videos. Hobocast is finally back. I got a little bit busy there with work. Hopefully the videos will be regular again. Can't promise it quite yet, it's quite a busy period. But anyway, in the last video, we took a look at the different video chat software and tried to determine which one had the best video quality, audio quality, and was easy to use. And in this video, we're actually gonna take a look at the software that you're gonna to use to actually produce your online talk show or podcast. So also just like the last video, we're gonna take a look at software that has a free license or a free tier. So we're gonna take a look at Expert Broadcaster, OBS, and Lightstream Studio. And we're gonna judge them again on three categories. So again, ease of use, then live production capabilities, and then post-production capabilities. So full disclosure, I did used to work at XSplit, but this isn't like a paid or sponsored video. And I am pretty familiar with using OBS. Now Lightstream, this is gonna be my first time using it in quite a while. So I think ease of use is probably the most important category to judge what software you use to produce your talk show or podcast, because you really just wanna get in there and start creating. You don't wanna spend time watching tutorials like this you know, trying to figure stuff out. And if you're using Skype or Discord to basically host your calls, which you should be if you watched the last video, they pretty much work the same way with both XSplit and OBS. So with Discord, you're gonna be using screen capture and with Skype, you're gonna be using NDI. So I think XSplit has a slight advantage here because it's a bit more intuitive in how it uses these two different sources or how it captures them. So with screen capture, you just target it and you can actually select the exact region that you wanna get, basically the video screen. Whereas in OBS, you gotta select it and then crop it. And then with NDI, XSplit already has a built-in Skype NDI source, so you just select the call that you want. Whereas in OBS, you actually have to download and install the NDI plugin. So setting up audio is pretty straightforward. You set up your microphone, and then you set up your playback device. This is gonna capture your call audio. And then when it comes to adding more production elements, Basically, as long as you understand the concept of layers or if you work with Photoshop or Premiere, you're just stacking things on top of each other. So at the bottom level, you have the call, then you add your lower third on top, maybe some text. Now, when it comes to doing a HD 60 FPS stream, you're probably gonna need a decent computer to encode these or a decent GPU. And with XSplit, there is a limitation. Like once you go above 720, 30 FPS, it adds a watermark and you only get four scenes. However, if you stay below this, like stay right at 720p 30, which I really don't think you need to go above for a talk show, then it's fine, everything's clean. But I will say like, if you have never done anything before and maybe you don't have the best computer and you don't wanna deal with all these different programs running, then Lightstream Studio might be a really good option for you. So Lightstream Studio is actually completely browser-based. You don't need to install anything, just open up Chrome and go to the website log in with your Twitch account, your YouTube account, whatever. Once you're logged in, you can set up your camera. And then if you wanna add someone to your talk show, you basically add their camera, it'll give you a link. You give it to your friend, they go to the website, they set up their camera, and right there, you've already got a talk show ready to go. And you can even add additional things like text and graphics and whatnot. The only thing is that Lightstream Studio has kind of a lot of limitations in the free tier. So you only get four hours to stream per day. It's only 720p, 30 FPS, and you're always gonna have the light stream watermark and you can only have one guest at a time. So then I think we have a pretty clear winner for ease of use. And I think that has to go to Lightstream Studio because it can work on any PC. You don't really need any extra hardware besides a webcam to start up and you can get your guests going right away. And even if you have a pretty potato PC, as long as it can run Chrome, you'll be all right because all the encoding is done you know, in the cloud. Now for this next section on production value with live streaming, I do wanna preface this by saying that this is something that can come with time. You don't really need this crazy good looking show right at first with sneaker transitions and lower thirds. What you should really be focusing on is the content, like your voice as a host or a guest or what kind of people you wanna bring on, you know, how do you build rapport with people? How do you make sure that there's not dead air? That's way more important because just think about it. Like think about your favorite podcast or your favorite talk show. I mean, are you even really watching them all the time? Maybe it's just something off to the side where you're doing some work. But having said that, you know, being able to add 
YouTube videos for people to react to or crazy lower third stinger transitions and all this stuff. Like that is a pretty fun element to add. So let's see what each software can do with this. So I gotta say for production elements, Lightstream is really limited. You can't change the scene transitions. You can only add text or images. You can share your desktop or a window, but if you wanna send it anything else, you actually have to encode an RTMP feed and send it to Lightstream, which basically means like all that lightweight, not encoding anything on your PC, you lose that actually. Now with XSplit and OBS, one of the more important things is being able to send a feed of the show being produced to your guests, especially if they're calling in remotely, like they need to see what's going on, if they're on camera or not. So XSplit's pretty cool because it comes built in with a virtual camera. So basically you add this as your camera source in Discord or Skype and people can see what's going on. Now OBS, you actually have to download a virtual camera plugin and install it and then you can do the same thing. Now when it comes to other stuff like adding videos or lower thirds or stinger transitions, basically XSplit and OBS have the same capabilities I would say OBS takes a little bit more setup. There's some more menus at the hop through and XSplit adds some utilities. Plus it actually has WebM support, but I know that'll eventually come to OBS as well. Now, when it comes to actual visual effects that you wanna do on your talk show or podcast, then I will say OBS has more capabilities. Like if you wanna do crazy sushi dragon stuff, there's more you can do with it. But if you just wanna do some simple visual effects or transitions or make your cameras move around nicely, then XSplit's source transitions and preset systems is actually really nice and easy to set up. So I will say if we're gonna talk about production capabilities and then kind of combine it with ease of use, I would say XSplit gets the slight edge here, but in terms of overall possibilities then OBS would be the winner. And Lightstream unfortunately is kind of a distant third. So if we're thinking about the modern podcast, online talk show meta, then we need to think about the way that people are actually consuming this media. And most people are probably listening on their way to work or they don't have time to listen to a one hour show. They only want the highlights and you know the really heated discussions. So in that sense, not only do you need a way to live stream this, but you actually need a way to be able to archive it and get high quality recordings that you can edit and upload later. And unfortunately with live stream, it does not have the capability to make recordings. What you would have to do is actually make Twitch highlights or whatever platform you're on, maybe stream it directly to YouTube. But basically you gotta cut those down and then re-upload those, which means you'll lose a little bit of audio quality as you edit and re-encode stuff that's already been encoded once. So like I said before, audio is really important, especially for these talk shows and podcasts. And I think here OBS has some clear advantages. So first of all, OBS lets you set higher bitrate levels than the other two software, right? You can go way above 192, which is XSplit's limit. But besides that, you also have this track system. And this track system, basically you can say track one, this is the live stream mix. Like all this audio goes to the live stream. And then track two, this is my recording mix. So in this one, maybe you take out your subscriber audio because people that are listening to this while they're driving, they're not gonna wanna hear these random alerts and not know what's going on. And if you're uploading to YouTube, you can also have it so that it doesn't actually play back any audio from videos, right? So if someone's sending you YouTube links and their songs, that way you can avoid content ID and not get your videos demonetized. So these are some really useful tools that OBS has. So XSplit actually has some cool audio tricks up its sleeve as well. So instead of doing this track mixes option like OBS, it actually does multi-track audio. So when you record something with XSplit and you gotta make sure to enable multi-track audio, and you drag it into your video editor, you'll see all the different audio tracks. So you'll see your microphone, you'll see everything mixed together, you'll see your playback audio, you'll see stream only audio. And so stream only audio, this is basically something that's only heard by the stream. So you can set it so that any of your subscriber or donation alerts are stream only, and the stream will hear it. And then when you go edit it, you take out that track. And that way when people are watching on YouTube, they won't hear these stream sounds and be like, oh, what's going on? So I think one really powerful possibility comes from XSplit's ability to assign a specific scene to record and to set a scene as a source. So you're gonna need a pretty beefy computer or a computer that at least has a 1660 or above NVIDIA GPU. So basically you set XSplit to be 4K resolution, right? And you set up your scenes as normal. Now you set aside one scene to have, let's say your guest cameras, three Macs, 
and then you set one source to be the scene as a source and make sure it's a live scene, right? You can only have four sources on this scene maximum. And then you set this scene as a scene that you record. So when you record, you're gonna record in 4K, but then when you broadcast, you're actually gonna broadcast at 1080p. And this is why it's important to have an NVIDIA GPU because it can handle the 1080p output and the 4K output, and you won't need a super crazy awesome CPU to do this. Anyway, you stream and record as normal, but when you take this recording, you're basically gonna put this 4K recording into a 1080p timeline, and that way you can actually crop and zoom in, right? So you can zoom in on any of these four quadrants, right? So most of the time, you're just gonna zoom in on the quadrant that looked at the live scene. This is basically the show, right? But like, let's say like one of your guests had a really good reaction and maybe they weren't on camera or you missed it. Now you can zoom into that camera and show that like crazy awesome reaction. And I think this is a really cool tool to like, make your archives maybe more interesting than what the live stream was or take out moments that the audience might have missed. I do got to say though, despite how cool this is and all the possibilities that it opens up, it does need specific hardware. So I do got to say that OBS is probably the overall winner in this category. So in conclusion, what is the best software to produce your online talk shows or podcasts? Well, this one isn't so cut and dry. I do gotta say it depends on where you're at in doing this. Like if you're a beginner and you just wanna get started, you're not sure if you're gonna like it, you don't have money for gear and equipment, maybe you just have your laptop with its webcam, then I would say start with Lightstream Studio. It just runs in your web browser. It'll run on basically any computer, super easy to set up. Now, if you've got a bit of equipment, you wanna make some splash, you got some graphics, some overlays, some fun guests, you're ready to go. Then I will say XSplit and OBS are really good choices. Now, if you want a bit of a easier and quicker time to set up, XSplit's the way to go. If you want all the options and you don't mind digging through menus, then OBS is a better choice. It also gives you a little bit higher audio bit rate qualities. But I wanna ask you, what do you think? What do you think is the best software? Have you thought about streaming a talk show? And if not, like what's stopping you? And what do you think is the most important thing? Is it audio quality? Is it video quality? Like, what do you like to see in a talk show? Let me know in the comments. Really interested to read what you say. Give a like if this video was helpful to you and subscribe if you're watching this at four in the morning because what is sleep anymore? Catch you next time.